im Stream und hier im Saal beim Chaos Communication Camp 2019. So, welcome again to the translation. Uh, here off the Bühne. We have one of the big ones of um, Austrian journalism from ORF, which is an Austrian big um, broadcaster, and he's basically doing network policy um, journalism before we even knew that network policy was a thing. So yeah, there's lots of knowledge that he can impart on us, and I'm quite excited to learn more about 5G surveillance standards and how the cops try, are trying to um, make more surveillance happen at the European um, Standard Institute. Okay, so you don't even know what what I'm going to be talking about. Okay, so these are the 5G surveillance standards with the most important people, most of very, very sympathetic people, sympathetic people. Currently, we're actually trying to set the security standards. These are releases 15 and 16. And there is like a lot of things happening there. There is a very clear, a very clear demarcation line between telecoms on the one side and cops and spooks on the other sides. And we'll talk about their plans, who is important here. I forgot. GPP. If you're here from 3GPP partnership group, SALI, that's like lawful interception. If, you, if you're listening, please, for your entertainment. Be careful, the first slide is kind of having some problem. Mm, yes. Okay, trying it again. Okay, there's some problems, but it works. So these are the standardization organs, like the, uh, the institutions that are hoping to standardize. So the standardization of um, surveillance goes back to a fishery um, decision from 1995 and what was only published in an EU journal. Now, if you, if you provide a digital telephone network, you need to provide some sort of surveillance measurements. Now, 1996, there were the first user requirements for lawful interception. The requirements are quite easy, actually. And the users in this case are police and secret services. The, uh, these requirements are coming from the Technical Committee uh, for Lawful Interception, TCLI. That's a large group. There's like 150 active people in there at least. And it's pretty much everything is in there. Like police, secret services, uh, anyone who's important there is in there. They have these, side of these requirements, this has to be possible, this has to be possible, this has to be possible. There's, um, so the participants, the documents and also all the, um, all the meetings are secret. I know some people that have been in there for like 20 years or more and there's a second group that uh, are basically implementing these um, these requirements and this is not actually part of the EU the technical the Etsy is not a um, it's not a public EU institution it's something that's organized and funded by the telecom and 3GGP that um, is for like lawful interception. That's a mixed group with telecoms, cops, spooks, and bureaucracies, bureaucrats, that are kind of there. Documents are public, but it's not easy to find them. 
And it's very difficult to understand them. I've been trying that for a number of years now. And in this group, telecom actually outweigh the other, the spooks. There's about 5,000 stakeholders from telecom in there, from telecom and uh, subcontractors. Okay, so we once had Etsy an interface for surveillance. It was uh, developed during the GSM time. And you see there's um, three surveillance channels. Of course, that's very abstracted. But where you see the green bar, you see there's like network internal functions. So let's just like your Android goes there. The telecoms, they're trying to get all this data from the network. And then via the black channel, the, the people are asking for uh, data. So um, if there's a, um, a warrant or something, um, then they can see. And they can get the data, basically. And or maybe not all the metadata, as we might be able to see. And the red one is core content. That's basically what you're talking about. That's what, how it used to be. And they kind of kept this with 3G. But that's a lot more co complicated. And 4G and LTE, they kind of managed to try to fit it in there. And now 5G, it doesn't work anymore. And this is kind of a change of paradigm. There's kind of like this, the center in the telecom network where all the data was found quite easily. That we don't have anymore in, with 5G. So, the network, what we will see now is something that we don't see here, which is like the data in the 5G network that's like kind of behind the green bar and where we ha have to get it and where we have to go it, where, where it has to go. And um, yeah, these specifications are basically what started it all. This was at the end of last year, they started, and ever since there's been like a lot of discussion and uh, they haven't really found any common ground so far. Okay, so this is how it looks. What we see here is everything that's blue is interception. And we don't have one point of intercept anymore, but instead we have many points of intercept. Why? Well, 5G networks are basically a cloud, a mobile cloud, and what we have as a point of intercept here is basically just cloud segments. This is a so-called sliced network. If you know something about cloud computing, which I assume you know, maybe you even know more than I do. And this is how it looks. I'll explain it a little bit. What goes where? To the right, at the right bottom, there's ADMF, which is basically administration function which controls the lawful interception lawful interception control function the lawful interception control function so commands come from the administration interface and go to the lawful interception and are there implemented and then of course they need to go from e to each of these points of intercepts and go into a specific direction and on the left, you see 5G networks, GSM, non-3GPP, which is GSM. And, das wird and there, basically, everything is kind of like um, combined there. And it's not as easy as, as it used to be. And you never know which point of intercept the user is actually using.
Hier beim, bei der Administration, da ist noch ein kleines. With this administration function, there is a small red remark, and at the LSCF as well. Target list. That says target list. Das ist die Liste. That's a list of all the targets that are supposed to be surveyed. Sollte abgeklärt. And we should basically check this and like. Um, Check them. Low. So, if your smartphone registers somewhere with a um, whatever, and there they have to already check: Is this smartphone on a surveillance list? Do we have to survey the smartphone or not? And if it's not, if this isn't done, then it doesn't work. Like none of these surveillance works. So as soon as you log in, you need to know whether you need to survey the smartphone or not. And this is da, da der große Ärger angefangen. This is where kind of the big trouble started. Security. So security for the surveyors. If we talk about security, then it, they, they're not talking about your security. They're talking about security for the surveyors. Die sind nämlich die User hier. Because they are the users here. User list. Everywhere where it says users, it's not a person with a smartphone, but instead it's a person that wants to surveil, the person that tries to intercept. And this is where you see also ein Entwurf, der stammt natürlich von This is kind of um, something, a draft that comes from the other side, from the surveyors, and they're kind of problematizing that the most sensitive of information is the list of targets. Of course, we can understand that. Now, well, yeah, imagine there's a list of all s surveyed smartphones in the entire network, maybe hundreds, maybe th thousands. And you need to check all of them for each login. Do we need to survey this or not? And when decided back, uh, then, then in the fishery task force, everything that um, happens in the network of a smartphone needs to be registered. Nothing can be missing, and that's really important. And this is what it says, completeness, it needs to be complete, basically. The law says that, and this is why the system needs to work like this. Okay, so there's two possibilities now. The one possibility is... Either... Von allen zu überwachenden Handys, anders geht das nicht. Auf jeden you put the entire list of all the smartphones onto each and every single point of intercept. And then every government actor was like, what you can, what you want to um, put our secret list onto the entire network? That's way too dangerous. Aber nur Für ihre eigene so they only care about security for them. Uh, they don't care about our security. They really want to get rid of our security. So is this auch in, in release 15 hinein. And this is also what went into release 15. There's two possibilities. The first possibility is you you put the entire target list and onto each and every single point of intercept, and then it works. A smartphone enters this um, this point of intercept, um, looks at the target list. Okay, we need this smartphone. We we'll, we can mark it. It's done. <coughs> but that's what the cops don't want. Wenn diese Liste abhanden kommt, stelle ich vor, if the list is lost or if it's public somewhere, um, imagine there's a list of all phone numbers that are currently um, being surveyed. That's like crazy. The second possibility, 
It's like the, the slides don't really work very well, so it's not on here. So the alternatives are... Let's go back. Okay, we need to go somewhere else. Trying to find the right slide. No. Still trying to find the right slide? Ich habe ihn verkehrt. Das ist natürlich kein Wunder, dann kann es ja nicht gehen. <lacht> Na. Ja. Jetzt sind wir gleich da. Okay, we'll be there soon, hopefully. Da sind wir. Okay, there we are. Jedes Mal, wenn einer so every time Mobiltelefon sich a mobile phone connects to some sort of CPNF, which is like the radio access network where you get access to something, when the target list isn't everywhere there, then each time you need to ask the control function and compare. So you need to send this via different network se segments and if you do it like this, there's a problem. Das bringt nämlich erhebliche Latenzen. You, you'll get latency. What was, let's remember, what was the unique selling point of 5G? Very, very low latency. Less than one millisecond. And this doesn't work like this. There's no way. Wisst ihr, was die, was die staatlichen Akteure vorgeschlagen haben? You know what um, the government actors pr proposed? Von einem Smartphone, das sich einloggt, müssen alle anderen Smartphones hinten in der Reihe warten. Okay, well, yeah, they kind of um, propose that you don't need, you can't access to one, you can access at the same time, but instead, if one smartphone currently tries to access, then um, all the other smartphones are getting to a queue. And of course, the telecoms say, said, well, this will not, this will not allow low latency. Because, natürlich, of, co of course, this is where kind of the big discussion started, the big debate, and oh. the government surveyors. Is man is man natürlich voll dagegen und will ganz einfach is completely against um, this and they kind of want to compel all the telecoms to um, have this kind of sur to make sure that the network archi architecture is surveillance friendly so that basically means that they're basically um, changing the business model of all the telecoms and that's not actually what's in the govern what's in the EU law that you need to do these um, networks like this. Of course, there's always some sort of, um, you can always look at it from one perspective or the other perspective, and this is kind of where the whole debate is at. So what might happen if you just check one after the other after the other? Well, latency, 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 and that's exactly and that's exactly what the telecoms don't want. That's an absolute no-go for them. So let's continue. So before voting on this, um, about uh, release number 15, there was a big presentation by Cops and Spooks um, in this working group. Usually they're only there with one person, Max. Because you have to travel around the world every two every two months for the next meeting, so they don't usually come with as many people. But at this single meeting alone, so from uh, PIDS, that's that's that signal analyse. That that the PIDS that um, that is an abbreviation for uh, platform interception something anal system analysis. So they usually have one person there. Here, at this particular point, um, at this particular meeting, they had four people from this particular organization. 
das Bundeskriminal. Um, the um, German Federal Criminal Agency, that is also not usually there, also had two people there. Um, the German um, Institution for the Agency for the Protection of the Constitution had several people there. There is Mr. Steinbrücker, who I've also known for 15 years now. Um, he is usually there for every meeting, but hasn't... So he's been for every meeting in in every meeting for 15 years, but at least according to the protocol, he hasn't said anything ever in all those 15 years. And then at the very bottom, you see some so, something that's called national technical assistance. That's um, how the GCHQ represents itself. So that's the department of GCHQ in the UK. And they're the ones who train the cops um, in surveillance. And they were also there with t four people. None of that helped because the telecoms had 5,000 stakeholders in this vote. Um, and so they were just completely superior. So what was the result? So Gilles de Kerkhofer was n not amused. He's the um, primary top terrorism fighter of the European Union. He was super angry. How can you do this? And please, this is where you can see, this is how you see what kind of mindset these guys have. Um, they sent a complaint um, to the EU Ministerial Council. Um, it says, it says the votes of the companies far outweigh the votes of the law enforcement authorities, and so they're complaining that industrial interests essentially outweigh, um, essentially outweigh government interests. But well, I mean, this institute is a private organization. So the right to vote um, in this organization are based on based on how much uh, that particular member organization pays into this organization. Terrible, terrible, right? Um, and then it also says, they also said that there is no veto right for people who are uh, ba basically have lawful authority. Well, what else do they want? Um, and there is no um, unanimity principle. So if there was a unanimity principle at this organization, then these standards won't be done in 10 years. And that's why... And so they're saying that's absolutely terrible that in a private telecommunications organization, which in this case is... Um, so this is this is a UN organization, but um, all these requirements come from Etsy. So sadly, sadly, all these cops are always outvoted. In some cases, they kind of come to an agreement with the private actors. But in general, we should start sending more people to this group. So, so that it's not going to change anything about the voting rights and the vote weighing. Do you know what that means? Um, that's basically trying to intimidate people. That's intimidation. That's simple intimidation. When they nicht mehr unter sich sind. So, when once telecoms are not by themselves anymore, but when at least there are there's a physical presence um, of law enforcement, and or if the entire thing is full of cops and spooks, that's clear a clear intimidation tactic, and that's. And so this guy was not the only one who wasn't happy in the US. Um, you may have heard about the controversy around Huawei. Um, I'm not going to talk about that further because we have limited time, but um, there is now a Lex Huawei on its way through the Senate, um, which has been written by hardliners on both the Republican and the Democrat side. And they want to force Trump to not use Huawei um, as a token um, in the trade negotiations with China, which is exactly what he planned. Um, so basically they're taking his joker away from him, um, which is why the daughter, which is why he took the daughter of the Huawei founder as a hostage. Um, that, that's nothing else. There was nothing, when she was arrested in Canada, that was nothing but a hostage taking. Well, of course, yeah, blah, blah, blah. They're talking about something related to Iran and sanctions. No, but she was arrested and that um, supposed to be prosecuted in the US. And Trump wanted to essentially use her as a bargaining chip um, in the uh, negotiations with, uh, with China. And you can see Huawei is also part of this working group. And Huawei is one of the largest payers of um, membership fees. Um, they pay as much as everyone else uh, together. And that's usually how things work um, in this in this working group. So usually there's 
not that many um, state representatives, but primarily it's telecom telecom companies. And then in the middle, you kind of have Mr. Steinrücke. So this was a different meeting because Mr. Steinrücke was is usually there. But yeah, and so that's where now we already get the response. So this is from the last meeting, which was in Poland, which was in mid-July. Um, which was an extraordinary meeting that wasn't initially planned, um, but because there was so much fighting going on, they had to organize an extraordinary meeting. And here there are eight, 28 change requests from the FBI. So this is just an excerpt. Um, so you can see, see uh, these are the change requests. So where does it say FBI on this list? Well, the FBI is called OTD here, uh, the Office of Technology Division. So you don't see right away that who who is who is being represented here. So you can't see right away that it's the FBI once you look at this document. So these are several change requests that are about asking for more metadata and more metadata. Bitte. Location data. So location data, please. So that's the current topic of discussion right now, and that's something that's going to be decided by the end of December. So this means what we can see here. Lila. Um, in purple are the requirements from the group, um, and in red is what Vodafone, um, so telecom company, added. Um, so what they demanded, because there will be so many cells in 5G, they would have to constantly check these and query these IDs to check which particular cell any particular smartphone is in. Imagine kind of like a big mall and it maybe has like 15 of these cells, and so they constantly permanent like constantly have to check which of these cells the phone is logged into um, and where how this person is moving around. That's what they're demanding. So they really want incredibly granular surveillance with data that the telecoms don't even have access to. Um, the telecom companies really don't care about this right now. They just want to put up these networks. And so Vodafone says, oh, it's going to multiply um, the uh, the pressure on the signals. Um, it's going to lead to problems on several interfaces. And it's going to be incredibly expensive for the telecom because they have to use way more equipment. And here, so this is um, kind of like a foul um, from a military intelligence service. So this slide is from an institution in Sweden called First Veris Radio Anstalt. So it's a conspiracy radio institution, a secret radio institution, which is nothing else but their military intelligence service. And so basically they did like a foul against the telecoms because they say and it's also written in the initial requirements. It says um, that encrypted communication, telecom, encrypted communication that can be opened by the telecoms has to be sent to the secret services um, in, in the clear. So since 2012, there has been a system for payment. And so the payment system is on the SIM card. <laughs> so everything that is on the SIM card is under the purview of the telecom. And so obviously that also includes an encryption system for payments. Um, and so... And so now the watchers essentially said, well, we need those encryption keys from you because you need to give us all the encryption keys you have access to. And so they basically... What they wrote in here... So they basically try to do that again. And why not? Because there's a sufficient number of payment systems, so why shouldn't the telecoms have one as well? So the telecoms are the only ones who have to give out these encryption keys when asked for them. And here, what they're saying is that if someone who's using this for roaming then those encryption keys have also been sent over with the roaming to the different country. That way the telecoms can completely forget about their payment systems. And so they basically force them to do this um, just because they really were unhappy about everything else. Okay, so we're getting towards the end. Oh, there's something here. 
Das nächste ah, okay, so the next meeting is in two weeks. There's never been this many meetings in a single year um, as about the 5G surveillance stuff. Usually there's maxim maximum of five per year, um, and so this is already the seventh this year. And so there's an extraordinary meeting um, in uh, New Jersey where Verizon is inviting everyone and the FBI is just around a corner, just three kilometers. And then there's a regular meeting um, in October, also in, in, also in the US. Schon wieder in SA3 Meeting in den USA, das hat es überhaupt noch nie gegeben. Meistens gibt es... That's also completely unprecedented. Usually there's only one meeting in the US or not a single one. And this year there's already been... And so it will be four with these two. Das heißt, es geht jetzt bei Release 16... And so when talking about the release number 16... Um, it's gonna be like beat by beat essentially for the next few weeks. Um, just the way it started last fall and it will be decided roughly just before Congress in December. Guys, like, let's lean back and look at how these two are be like how these two th sides will beat each other up. It's popcorn. Popcorn. Um, please give us beer to watch this. Um, thank you very much, Erich. Um, so we have 10 minutes left for questions from the audience and from the internet. So if you have a question, please send it on our chat or come up here to the mic, um, to the angel with the mic. Front of house, gibt's auch. Um, or go to the front of house, which also has another mic angel. I don't see any lights so far, so there are no questions yet. So this is your unique opportunity. Otherwise, we'll have a little conversation on stage here right now. Uh, yeah, I, that it's pretty common that there are no questions about this because this whole telecom stuff that's not and especially telecom networks. Um, I'm the only idiot who's basically spending all this time um, on reading all of this stuff. And for most people, it's like, most people think it's too stupid for them to spend time on. Oh, actually, do see a light? So I'm, yeah, looking forward to the first question. Just a matter of comprehension. Um, it's a question for clarification. So is um, this requirement for low latency is that something that cannot be combined with the surveillability or, um, or the ability to monitor? Is that what I understand that correctly? Yeah. So I think that is basically the core, st like the core argument. But except, so this entire target list, sprayed all over your network. Um, and this entire like is sprayed all over your network, as the um, watchers would say. And so they're really scared of that. Because this target list is their, is essentially their treasure. Imagine this. Right now, if it comes out that a single person is being monitored, that's already kind of like a big deal and everyone's like, oh, well, so that person is being watched. So there's definitely attention, there's a discussion, but what if the entire list was leaked? of people who are being monitored right now. Then all the criminals would essentially get a new uh, smartphone contract very quickly. And the only ones who are left are going to be the ones who are being watched for political reasons. And that's also not something that's desirable. And so they really don't want that those are being watched, which is understandable. So they have to take care of that. And so these two things are essentially cannot be combined. But at the same time, they want the maximum degree of security for themselves. And so the architecture of this entire network is supposed to be measured against their demands. And that's the main problem. So if you don't do this thing with the list, um, you're going to have this incredible latency unique selling point and the entire the entire unique selling point of 5g is gone so because the selling point is low latency 
And so that's why the latency, that's why the telecoms are not going to give that up for any reason whatsoever. We're, they're putting so much money into this really, really fast network, and suddenly all these people are telling us that we have to make it slower just so they can monitor people in the network. That's a very clear. That, that, that's just a very clear, hard economics where the state is essentially intervening in, with the business models of these uh, telecoms. Of course, a nation state can do that. You can't really do anything against that if there's a law. Um, so, for example, Seehofer in Germany, um, he might be one of the first ones who will ask for more surveillance because whenever it's about surveillance, he's going to be one of the ones who's trying to help, even if he doesn't know what's going on. Um, and that's... And the telecoms really need to stand up for themselves in this case, because otherwise they're gonna have to. They will have wasted all this money. And precisely what the networks weren't able to do before is also now not solved. Will still be a problem essentially. Is that clear? Yeah. Sounds good. So I'm um, slightly less informed. Question. Um, so if we're looking at the 5G discussion right now, it's primarily about the arguments of, well, we want telemedicine, remote medicine, um, and so everything, like all these things that need very low latency. And so all of these things, such as remote medicine, would also be affected by these, uh, these lists, or would they have separate networks? So that's unclear for now. So there's definitely going to be a sliced network with several clouds that are connected. So for example, the way Amazon does it, um, so they're basically using the same architecture um, for the CIA, um, where you have storage space for the CIA. And so the question is, to what extent that is also under surveillance, but they absolutely want the way it looks like right, right now, every single device seems to be affected that has a SIM card. So every single device, without any exceptions. Um, with regards to medical devices, I don't know. Nobody really knows for now because these networks don't exist so far. And so all of these things, like uh, there will be no autonomous cars without 5G. I mean, come on. And an auto autonomous car needs to be able to drive autonomously, with, even without 5G, otherwise it wouldn't be an autonomous car. Same for this whole remote medicine um, and surgery stuff. Can you imagine a surgery that is going to use a mobile a network? That's an absurd idea. And it's, it's terrible, like terrible talking points that the same protagonists as always are using to kind of like these. It's like all these politicians who want to show off and to have understood nothing but want to kind of claim all these benefits for themselves. Or we can do this, 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 and that. This is all an aufgelegter Quatsch. It's complete bullshit. Um, and it's really mostly like part of the hype that is being created about this. So the question with regards to how much of that is actually going to be reality, that's difficult to say for now, because no, none of these networks exist so far. So I just wanted to say something. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., um, Detlef Borchert um, of Heise and I will have the honor of giving a second talk. Um, Übertitel 50 Jahre Journalismus im WWF. And it's uh, going to be called 75 Years of Journalism on the World Wide Web. So there will be two of us. Um, and with the two of us together, we have 50 years um, on the internet. And so there's someone else who also is added. So as the Greeks would say, this might be the non published, the unedited version. So tomorrow we will be telling you about what we haven't written about, um, about what we haven't written with regards to certain topics. Um, and that's going to be happening here at 6 p.m. Um, amongst other things, it will include the funny story of me turning into a persona non grata um, in 2001 at Etsy, this organization I was talking about earlier. Thank you.